The W and Z particles took rather longer to find. That's because they were predicted to be extremely massive. And we know from Einstein's E equals mc squared that it takes a lot of energy to make a lot of mass. So it took the biggest particle accelerator of its day, the SPS, and the most sophisticated detector of its time, this UA1, to coax them out into the open. But eventually they were found, force-carrying particles like the photon and the gluon, but with more mass than a nucleus of copper. The discovery of the W and Z particles was a triumph for particle physicists because they now had a complete set of the force-carrying particles. But that's a long way from the end of the story. Why are the W and Z particles so massive when the photon and gluon are massless? The maths just doesn't add up as elegantly as we'd like and we suspect there's a missing piece of the puzzle. In the early 60s, British physicist Peter Higgs came up with a way of generating masses for the particles that quite magically avoided the mathematical difficulties. Now the Higgs mechanism is quite a complicated bit of physics, but we've had over 40 years to come up with good analogies, and here's one of the best. These are physics students. They represent the Higgs particles, filling every corner of the universe. If a popular lecturer like Fred walks through the students, they crowd around to ask profound and intelligent questions, and his path across the grass is slowed down. He has acquired mass. But if a less popular lecturer walks across the grass, then everyone ignores me. I'm a massless particle like a photon, and I can travel through the universe unimpeded at the speed of light. We don't know if the Higgs particle exists or not, but to find out, scientists have built the biggest particle accelerator ever. I'm standing 100 meters below the ground at CERN in Geneva, and this is the CMS detector part of the largest and most complicated scientific experiment ever attempted. Here, we'll recreate the conditions that were present in the universe less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. How do we recreate those extreme conditions here on Earth? Well, you need one of these, the Large Hadron Collider. 27 kilometers in circumference and filled with over 2,000 superconducting magnets, each at 1.9 Kelvin. That means that they're colder than the space between the stars. Inside here, we accelerate protons to 99.9999999% the speed of light before bringing them into collision inside four giant detectors. The LHC is going to be exploring totally unknown territory, but that doesn't mean to say we have not got some ideas of what might be there. And one of the most famous examples is the idea of the Higgs boson. And this, according to theory, is a manifestation of what happened when the universe froze. Now, I don't mean froze like at ice temperatures. I'm talking about 10 with 17 zeros after it degrees. That before that time, according to our best theories, the universe was in a state of beautiful symmetry, whereas today it's full of structure. And just as the structure of the snowflake emerges when water freezes, so, in our theories, the structure of what we call the standard model of particles and forces emerges when the universe froze at this incredibly high temperature. Why would we build all this? to understand the universe. The universe today seems almost impossibly complex, full of planets, stars, and even life itself. But over centuries of experimentation, we found that the complexity is really a property of an old, cold universe. When the universe was much younger and much hotter, it appeared to be much simpler. And so it's here that we're gonna recreate the conditions that were present in the very earliest times to hopefully reveal that underlying simplicity.
Well, speaking as a cosmologist, the LHC will be exciting because it should say yes or no to whether the Higgs boson, a type of particle, exists or not. And it's a sort of particle that cosmologists are interested in because we think particles of that type are responsible for a very rapid uh, expansion of the universe in its early history, which forms the cornerstone of modern cosmology. It's a theory called inflation. The standard model, our theory of particle physics that we have, tells us that there should be a Higgs and we should find it without trouble at the LHC. But our theory could be wrong. We know that our theory is incomplete, which means it has to break down somewhere. So if we don't find a Higgs at the LHC, it could be a sign that a new deeper underlying theory of matter is just about to surface. When you go to a new regime like the LHC will, quite often something pops up that's unexpected and can take physics down uh, a different path altogether. And, and that's the sort of exciting physics that, that I'd like to see at the LHC. Well, the LHC could find uh, that there turn out to be more than three dimensions of space and one of time and particles can actually disappear into extra dimensions, which is pretty wild and wacky, but it could be real science and not science fiction at the LHC. I wouldn't like to predict what will happen at the LHC. It's like guessing what we'll find on our first journey to the stars. But the giants of history would have loved access to this machine because science is about exploring. And the only way to uncover the secrets of the universe is to go and look.